Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. That good was brought to you by special requests because I've stopped doing that because everyone tells me, is my internet connection broken? Uh, but I brought it back. Brought it back because everyone's saying, Where's it? where did the good go? Good didn't go anywhere. Good's been inside me all along. We have a very special broadcast tonight who's bringing out the good in me. Show number, nine, number 94, baby. We are binge hosting shows, trying to bring you live music. Six more shows left. I think it's like 70 something consecutive days. And people have been saying, what are you going to do after you're done? We're going to rent a boat. We've already rented the boat. Let's show them the boat. Let's show them the boat. It's a nice yellow boat. It's a banana boat. And that's going to be me at the rear. I'm always at the rear for some reason. Arrears. Hmm. I'm fishing, looking for trout, catch and release. I understand there's a lot of like vegetarians who watch this show, a lot of vegans. I don't know how many animals here. Okay. We, we, we're, we're one with the animals. We have dogs with us. Oreo and Maori coming with us. That's Camilo telling me how to fish because he's always telling me what to do. And that's obviously uh, Sandra looking into the distance. She's our visionary. She's looking out into the future, onto the horizon. She's saying there will one day be a show, one day be a day where there's no quarantine concert series. She is right. That day will be here in six days. I am looking forward to it. But until then, we're going to focus on the music. We're going to focus on the music and bringing all the great artists that we know, really. Um, so by now, you know, pandemic, there's a pandemic. And um, are you going to float that across the screen? Oh, there we go. All the way across this. We work on high sophisticated. We have a very big animation budget for the show, as you can see. Um, there we go into this. Let's not drown. There we go. All right. Panda and international, obviously, um, tragedy. Uh, yesterday was a, you know, we crossed a milestone, 100,000 deaths. I mean, can you imagine what we're going through as a country? It's, it's, it's uh, terrible. It's tragic. It's, um, you know, when you think about when this first started, there was a really sense of, a sense of panic. And it almost feels like there's a sense of, you know, people going out again. And But the enemy, the, the illness is still out there. And uh, especially for creative professionals, life is not getting materially better uh, because, you know, gigs are still canceled. It's still very difficult, very difficult to uh, make a living as an independent artist. And um, it's not just the artists. We love the artists. But I was tr trying to make a point and say there's a lot of people connected to the artists, the managers and bookers, and engineers and there's a whole ecosystem of creative professionals who are, <clears throat> are out of work or having a difficult time finding work. So we really have to be there for those in the creative uh, creative world. You know, I wrote an op-ed about this recently. It's called, um, the, the title of it was called Become a Patron of the Arts to Help the U.S. Economy Get Back in Tune. The U.S., oh, here's here's my dance again with Sandra. I never know what slide's going. I love you, Sandra. <laughs> but let me tell you about, about uh let me tell you about my my article. Basically, it's an it's an op-ed that says we need to support artists. We need to be there for artists, and we need to um, be a patron because there's always been a link between patrons and artists. And you can either buy the music, stream the music, buy the hat, buy the buy the fanny pack, buy the left sock, buy the right sock, buy the merch. I mean, you have a birthday coming. Everyone has birthdays coming up. Weddings, bar mitzvah. Hire a musician to play on like a private Zoom. It's a pretty simple idea, right? Just um, you could also. Um, I get a private lesson. I'm, I'm trying to like learn a new instrument. You could hire someone for a private lesson. All kinds of ways to um, to uh, support artists. So there's always been this link between patrons and artists. So please be a friend to artists if you can. All right. I want to thank the folks at All About Jazz for broadcasting a lot of these concerts. Their 25th anniversary. The 25th anniversary. And uh, if you're an artist, go make an artist page there. If you're a patron, go. Um, Make a donation if you can. It's important to support the journalism happening at All About Jazz. All right. So um, we always like to do, uh, we, we've been doing this, these conversations with filmmakers too, quarantine film series, conversations with people who, just just like the musicians, the film festivals are all essentially over and they've been canceled. I, I made my first movie this past year and I was really bummed because all the film festivals we had applied to have been canceled. We do conversations with filmmakers in the morning at 10.30 or 11 a.m. Eastern. These are people who had their films accepted into top festivals like South by Southwest and the Tribeca Film Festival. For example, Sammy Khan, Academy Award nominee. His recent movie, The Last Out, 
is about Cuban baseball players trying to make it in the major leagues. So these are the stories that are going to be on your Netflix and HBO in the coming weeks and months. So we're doing, obviously, the concert series and the film series in, in the morning. All right. Now for the education bit, education segment of the show, there's always a music word of the day, right? And there will be a pop quiz now. We have a few defending champions. People, I'm looking at you, Daisy. I'm looking at Claudia. All right. So the artist today, his name begins with a G, right? So this word is inspired by him. I'm going to ask you at the end of the broadcast, what is the word of the day? If you can tell me what it is, you'll get a prize. What is the prize? Show them what the prize is. It is a puppy presenting you a trophy. You know you want that, okay? Can you can you earn that prize? All right, so let's look at the word of the day. Gravis, gravis. It's a Latin term, the earliest form of musical notation from the two signs of Greek prosody, written text to be performed, indicating the stress, pitch, and length of syllables in the text. The gravis indicated a lowering inflection of the voice. Hmm. I'm not sure if there'll be much gravis playing but uh, we will see. We'll see what this artist really is incredible. So I wouldn't be surprised if he evokes this. All right. So I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. Uh, oh, here's a quote of the day. Painting is poetry that is seen rather than felt. And poetry is painting that is felt rather than seen. Leonardo da Vinci. All right. We'll turn to the phrase. You can find us everywhere. We're broadcasting on all platforms. We're on the Facebook. We're also on the Twitter. We're also on the very delicious Instagram cracker. Um, also on LinkedIn. Did you see the report today? An additional 2 million people file for unemployment, over 40 million people without jobs in our country. If you're on LinkedIn looking for a job right now, our heart goes out to you. Stay with us. Get inspired with the music to go crush your job search. We're going to keep you motivated and inspired. We're also on Twitch. We're also on Periscope. Um, we're all booked up for the rest of the series. Um, we're looking for ideas for our, our last couple of shows. So, you know, send us your ideas if you want us to do something or book someone or, you know, how can we, how can we serve you uh, the best way possible? We want your ideas. We, so send us, you know, should we do a fun contest? Do you, do you want to see me dance? Do you want to see Sandra and Camilo dance? Um, we can do the Macarena. I mean, we want your ideas. One of the ideas was to have a staring contest. And uh, this is it right here. This is, this is Camilo. And I have having a staring contest like this. No, uh, Camilo's definitely going to win that. Look at that. Look at that intense look. Camilo, Camilo's the undef he's like the defending champion right there. Every sound check he wins. All right. Now for the best part of the show, you get to meet the incredible artist. This artist I've known for a long time. And by a long time, I mean a few years. He's really, really talented. One of the best singer songwriters that I know. Man of steel with a heart of gold. That's true. That really is true because he does have a heart of gold. I don't, it's tough for the cardiac system, but he is a very, very, very kind gentleman. And he's a Billboard Top 10 recording artist, singer, songwriter, based in Rhode Island, co founder of the Indie Collaborative, inducted recently into the Indie Music Hall of Fame. He's performed all over, he's toured all over. Um, and when he sings, um, you almost just forget where you are. And I, I kind of think that's what we need um, right now what we're going through as a country. So please welcome to the broadcast, the maestro himself, the wonderful genius and my friend, Grant Molloy Smith. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody out there doing too? You guys hear me good enough? Doing great. Tell, tell us first, where are you broadcasting? I'm, yeah, tell us where are you broadcasting from? I am in the bunker deep underground in uh, Rhode Island. That's why I live in a little town, a little tiny village in Rhode Island. I'm not from here originally. Maybe gotcha, Chicago, gotcha. So but, you're, uh, but I live here. <laughs> cool. You're in Rhode Island. I'm in Atlanta. Everyone um, watching at home, tell us uh, where you're watching from. I want to tell Grant all the places that he is lighting up around the world. So city, states, and extra points for counties. Put it up, and we'll put it up on the screen. Grant, tell me first, how has the quarantine affected you? Well, of course, it canceled all of my shows that I had booked for the next, you know, four or five months including uh, my second appearance at Carnegie Hall, which is now going to be next April. It was going to be April 22nd a few weeks ago or a month ago. Now it's April 7th of uh, 2021. And I was going to do a tour of Scotland. That's all canceled. And I was going to drive all the way down the East Coast and all the way back up again. And uh, that was all canceled. <laughs> so I did my last show uh, March 15th out in uh, 
California Central Valley. I did a show in Bak Bakersfield and Fresno and Tehachapi out there. And then I flew home and that was that was all she wrote. That's that's the only thing. <laughs> so in terms of live performances, obviously that's the biggest effect on me and millions of other people and the people that support us, like you said, the sound people, managers, bookers, talent buyers, you name it. The venues themselves are dark and not making any money and losing money, which if you're not making money, you're losing money because you still have expenses. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not complaining for myself because it affects the entire world. So it's not just me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just one of millions and maybe billions caught up in this. Well, um, I hear you on that. How do you? How are you passing the days? It's you know, it's easy to get into a rut. Do you have a routine? Do you wake up at the same time? Do you make your bed? Is there a cup of coffee involved? <laughs> what's what's a day like? Yeah. Well, like? actually, I've been super super busy, more busy than ever before, because I can't travel. So I've just filled up my time with all kinds of projects, and. Uh, for example, with the Indie Collaborative, which is a group that I'm uh, the co-founder of, we're doing this gigantic song. We have a theme song that we wrote, that I wrote, and uh, and we've got 50 different of our artists who've contributed vocals and instrumental tracks and all that kind of stuff. I just finished the mix with more than 100 tracks and Pro Tools. It's being mastered out in Nashville now, and uh, and now we're make now I'm making the video. So I've already I'm already about 20 hours into the video of that one, and it's another enormous task. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We're getting some comments to if you could speak up or turn up your microphone right. somehow. Be as loud as I can. I'll turn my hand down. Camila. Um, some of the places that are um, tuning in, I thought I would let you know. We have St. Simons Island, Georgia. That's a nice area of the of the country. Um, Sean Booz checking you out from the Hamptons. We got New Jersey in the house. Now you're just speaking about Nashville, Sherry's. What's up? We also have all the way in Rajasthan, India. Wow. Checking, tuning in. Manisha is from Rajasthan, India. Okay, so good morning over there. <laughs> yeah, you're up. You're up early, Manisha. Thanks for joining us. Cool. So, and here we go. Some more New Jerseys and uh, Frankfurt, Kentuckys. So, <clears throat> a few questions. It already coming up. Um, Van wants to know, is that your studio? Which room are you in? Yeah, this is my home studio. I, I have my own studio that I use just for making my demos. And making demos is kind of how I write songs. And I, I produce some pretty elaborate demos. And then we go into a real studio with real other people, not just me, and really do them. But this is where I sort of do my, you know, my demo version of my songs. Gotcha. I see a few guitars there. What... um. What is the instrument, or how many instruments do you have there? What's what oh, over there? You can't see. You can only see about ten percent of the ones I have here. I've, I've got about five or six acoustic guitars, about the same number of electric guitars, dobros. There's ukuleles. There's mandolins. There's ban several banjos. Sorry for that, <laughs> and a couple of different basses. I'm not a bass player like you are, but I can find the root note and play it. And uh, and then over here, you can see the, there's a piano, and there's a few other things around. A lot of percussion stuff too. Yeah, we need to play a game like spot the <laughs> spot the. You, I'd have to move the computer around so you could see. Cause can any, can you? Me, but I, I can't. It's a gigantic screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Um, and uh, I want to ask is um, I wanted to talk to you about your recording projects, but I want instead of telling people, I want to show people your incredible music. So, what would you like to begin your set with tonight? Well, I think I'll. I should do a song called Ride That Train. You know, in my kind of music, you got to have a train song. I think that's even a legal requirement in, in 49 out of 50 states. And, uh, and you got to have a prison song. That's all obviously needed. And a good murdering song once in a while is, is also a very nice thing to have. So, I, I, you know, in this day of trying to be environmentally friendly, I put all three together into one song instead of, you know, wasting th all the electrons from three songs. So I wrote a song called Ride That Train. And it's on the it's on the Dust Bowl record, so I can play that one if you'd like me to. I'll, I'll strum it. If you, are you ready? Please do. Please, please. I still dream, but I can't sleep without you. 
I still run, but I'm not free. I still rise, even when I'm falling. Don't you wait, don't wait for me. Fly that train, fly that flame without me. to me I still love yes I still love you I still like but I don't seem to care you are wrong all I ever wanted don't look back you ain't headed there There's no clouds, no sky above me, no peace, and no wings for me to fly on, fly on high, back to you, ride that train, light that flame, without me. And that's how that one goes. <laughs> no, I was wondering what that sound was. I just realized. <laughs> this is like a sitcom. It's, a, it's your live audience here in Atlanta that loves you. Um... <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, I've done a bunch of these shows like this, and you finish a song, and it's like, of course, dead silence, and all you see maybe is a text, but usually takes ten seconds to appear. So. Actually, what I, what we do here is everyone oh, at home, San Miguel. everyone at home, you know what to do. I will translate your emojis into real life. So Camilo's got some. Lo- <laughs> I mean, Manisha's got melodious, <laughs> great song and guitar playing to Shirley. Surely, okay, so I'm seeing some familiar names out here. Here we go, here we go. Clap, 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 clap. Heart, heart, heart. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> ben Banerjee. Oh, Ben, there he is out of Lexington, Kentucky. I visited him about a year or so ago. Nice to see all these. Clap, 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 clap. Namaste, 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 namaste. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. This is a longer applause than I would get so, in a regular show. So thank you. <laughs> well, we believe every artist needs their applause. Herschel's in the house. Herschel. Oh, it's so great to see you, my friend. Fred Liu, who was on the show last night. Oh, Cheers, Grant. Cheers, Fred. So you're getting a lot of love. Um, wow. Actually, we got we have, the, of course, my the questions. tight. <laughs> um, speaking about your hat, uh, Karen Tanabe, who is an incredible writer, she just put out a new book. She says, that hat is giving me life. <laughs> hey, Karen. <laughs> so we have a, a couple questions, actually, that are about that. So sure. folks want to know, 
Tell me about the hat. I've been wearing cowboy hats since I was maybe five. That's been just, I, when I grew up, there was all these Westerns on TV, you know, because I'm 800 years old. So when I was a kid, they were all Westerns and like Bonanza and all those, sh- and even the ones before that were in reruns when I was a kid, like Gunsmoke, that was off the air, but it was still being played. And I, and I don't know, just when I was growing up and I grew up on the Florida Panhandle, which is called jokingly Lower Alabama. It's the part of Florida that's directly below Alabama. And it's very sh- short from top to bottom. It's maybe only where I was where I was living. It was maybe 30 miles. I was right in the middle. You went 15 miles to the north, you were in Alabama. If you went 15 miles to the south, you were in the Gulf of Mexico. And so uh, it was very southern and very Alabama. And I don't know, cowboy hats were like the big thing, and I just never stopped wearing them. I, I just like them, and they're really good in the rain. Yeah, they seem <laughs> they seem that way. Um, also, some questions coming in. People want to know what you're drinking. Water. It really is water. Okay. I don't drink alcohol when I'm going to play or during playing because then I start to forget all the lyrics and act silly. Yeah. And not in a good way. So it's not, I don't do that. After, after I play, I'm, I'll probably have a glass of wine. I know that because I think I've had a glass of wine with you after one of your shows at, uh, at Carnegie Hall. I remember the, <laughs> um, but don't let don't follow our examples, right? We want you to be drinking at home. And in fact, everyone watching at home, tell us what you're drinking. Yeah. I have I'm having uh, some some water too because I don't like to miss. But after this, I will be yeah drunk, listening to your music <laughs> and enjoying a nice drink. So let us know what you're drinking at home. I will tell Grant we're all toasting. This is to you, Grant. This is the first toast I've ever done to an artist. This is to you, Grant. I'm doing it to all you all to back. You. Come here. Thank you. Clink. Boom. Clink. You need a clink sound effect, Sandy. Oh, yeah. Clink. <laughs> um, all right. So Shirley is joining us with the club soda. Uh, Daisy is joining us with the juice. Gin and juice, maybe, if I know Daisy. Just kidding, Daisy. All right. Um, what would you like to do for your next for your next number? I, uh, I think I'll play a song called The Boy Who Built the Moon. It's based on a you know a true story. I always say that and everyone, no one laughs, and then I have to explain that it's just a joke. But I think people aren't sure if I'm kidding or not. I do it too deadpan maybe. But it's just a metaphor, and uh, I don't know. It's one of my favorite. It's my favorite one to play. It's one of my favorite ones to play, you know, of my own songs. So, you know, I have songs I like better, but this one I like to play when I have to play alone without a band. It, you know, some songs come across well with a band and not alone, and vice versa. So, I don't know. I'm ready if you are. Cool. Let's do it. I'm ready. I've been searching everywhere there's a place, but she's not there. Lonely lights are way up high. They need her, and so do I. And I, I'm gonna take these hands. I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire. And I will shape this land and lift her up into the sky. I'm the boy who built the moon Take your gloves and steady life Get your boots and pull them tight There's hats and tools to spare And breathers full of air There's work for every hand There's more work than we plan And I, I'm gonna take these hands I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire And I will shape this land And lift her up into the sky I'm the boy who built the moon
One thousand sleepless nights One million fireflies I'm wishing from afar Here comes the morning storm And I I'm gonna take these hands I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire And I will shape this land And lift her up into the sky And I, I'm gonna make things right I will not fall, I will not see I'm the boy who built the moon My name is Ralph. His name is Ralph. He's a yes. He, 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 he loves. Character. Everyone, give it up for Grant Malloy Smith. Here we go. We got some moons coming in. There you go. We got some stars. <laughs> Boom. Gorgeous. <laughs> Funny. I will keep applauding as long as their emojis coming in. Fuego. <laughs> We're gonna play a game. It's gonna. It's called how. How much applause can we give Grant Malloy Smith? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Ron San Miguel got some tan hands for you. All right. So good to see all these beautiful people out there. Very strong and bold. <laughs> In case you were wondering, all right, Daisy's representing. <laughs> Bravissimo. Bravissimo is not the word of the day, but we'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> all right, all right, right. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. You need a band <laughs> audience that will end on cue. Um, all right, my friend, tell me about. I want everyone to know about Dust Bowl. Your last album came out 2017. Let's put that up on the screen. Walk me through um, why you wanted, what was the thinking behind that project, and also walk me through the production process of it. Yeah, well, I I was working on just a, a follow up to my Yellow Trailer album, which was just a American Roots record. It was not going to be a theme record, I didn't have that idea yet. But I wrote a song one day that, uh, you know, a lot of times I make up, you make up words as a songwriter just to fill in and be a placeholder, and later you, you know, replace them. But I wrote a song called Never Seen the Rain, and I thought, well, i got to change that, because, you know, there's a Creedence Clearwater song, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? It was very similar. I didn't want to write a, it was not anything like it musically, but it was, the title was very similar. But, you know, try as I might, I could not change that, and I, I just said, I love, I love the way it sounds so much when I sing it that I have to keep that name. But I have to figure out now, what does it mean? What do you mean, never seen the rain? What, what, that doesn't make any sense. Everybody's seen the rain. So I thought, well, maybe it's an exaggeration. Like, someone hasn't seen the rain in a really long time. Like, it's been a drought. And then I just had a vague recollection from school about the Dust Bowl. I didn't remember very much about it. I just remember there was a big, long drought, and it resulted in all kinds of these big dust storms blowing around the country. So I started researching that just that minute. And I looked it up, and, the more, and about three hours later, I was, I was hooked on it. I loved the whole history of it, not because it's wonderful, but because it was a tragedy. It was the greatest environmental disaster we had in, in our history so far. I hope it's the biggest. I hope there isn't a bigger one that happens. But there's so many stories of, you know, trial and tribulation and, and uh, you know, suffering and then redemption, and it's the whole environmental uh, situation, too, which is still a thing today. It's, it also involves... Uh, controversies we still face, maybe in, in slightly different ways, but for example, when all the people had to emigrate or leave out of the Great Plains, like Oklahoma, Texas, that whole area where that happened, 
uh, millions of people did, and they were basically treated like illegal aliens inside their own country. They were not really particularly welcomed when they showed up in large numbers somewhere, like, like in Bakersfield in that area where, where I just played a few months ago. And so there's just so many great stories in there, a lot of pathos and just the human condition, right? So I, I just said, I got to make, I'm not just going to make this song about the Dust Bowl. I'm going to make the whole record about the Dust Bowl. I'm going to make a theme record like we used to have, you know, uh, back in the day. And, uh, and, and then that's when it started. Then I did, it took me almost just about three years to complete the record because I really wanted to do lots of research. And... Uh, Right, like raw historical research. I didn't want to watch movies about it or listen to other people's music about it. I wanted to do my own, do my own music and songs based on the history, not drawn from someone else's vision. You know, so I didn't see that Ken Burns documentary until after, <laughs> till after I wrote the whole thing, and uh, or anything else. I, there was a couple of records that people said you should listen to the Bruce Springsteen thing, and I didn't listen to it till after I finished Dust Bowl. I didn't want to just. Now, what he did was different anyway. He sort of channeled the, the, the Steinbeck uh, version, which is the exodus out of the Great Plains, you know, from the Great Plains. Yeah. Uh, well, let's put the, uh, the song list up there if we can. I think I clipped it. Um, oh, yeah, this is the album we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, talk us. We all know. I, I think a lot of us know about, about uh, Dust Bowl. Walk us through. Sorry, breaking up. Your first one. Uh, I yeah, it, I, I was saying. I'm sorry. I was saying, talk, walk us through your first release as well that you you mentioned briefly. I want people to know more about it as well. Oh, oh Yellow Trail, the one back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that was my first real foray into American roots music. I had been doing kind of rock music and pop music and that kind of thing, but and and for years everybody told me, you know, your songs are really like kind of like country and folk music combined. I don't know what to call it. It's not really country. It's not really folk music. It's from somewhere in the middle. Um, and But that's what we call today Americana or American Roots. So I just went full full head on into it. And I, I, I spent a couple of years on this one too because I learned to play the banjo and I learned to play the mandolin. I wanted to be able to express those instruments on the, on the record too. And then I got other people to play things that are too hard for me to play, like violin, for example. I don't, yeah. I don't ever learn that. <laughs> or anything else that doesn't have friends. Right. Hey, <laughs> friends are my friends. <laughs> what is the artwork? Exactly. What is the art on this cover? Actually, that or is... The cover art. Oh, here. What is this picture? Yeah, it's a painting that I did from a photo that I took in Ireland. That's actually looking uh, north, northward, standing on the, um, the shore of Galway, Ireland, and Western Ireland, looking kind of north along mm -hmm. the coast. And that's a jetty that's sticking out. And I, I added the yellow trailer and the little horse because that's, that's one of the, 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 there's a song of the same title, Yellow Trailer. I named the album after a particular song on, on the record uh, called Yellow Trailer. It's a, it's a little parable about a guy who has big dreams and wants to do all kinds of things. And some of them yeah. he does, but most he doesn't. You know, it's a little bittersweet kind of a song. Sure. Claudia has a question here. What is your songwriting process like? Oh, that's a good one. Um, it, it usually takes several different forms. Some, some songs are written totally intentionally, like I, I get an idea for a song, a thematic idea, like an, uh, you know, either maybe just a title or just a, a, a topic that I want to write about. Um, and then I just sit down and do it, like a job, because it is my job, actually. But other songs uh, sort of come out spontaneously uh, when I'm recording or when I'm practicing, because I, I rehearse a lot. I try to rehearse every single day if I, if I can, unless I'm driving a car 800 miles or something. And then a lot of times when you're, I'm sure writers know this, you, you're messing around with the guitar and then you just, you hit something by accident that you go, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I like the way that goes from there to there. And then something else happens. And then that's how a song starts a lot of times. You just accidentally play something that you know from experience, there can be a song with that. There, a song can come out of that. It can spring out of that and be pulled into existence somehow. Yeah. It's kind of two ways, intentional and then accidental. And they, and they both work great. Gotcha. We'd love to hear another one. What do you want to do next? Maybe I'll do a song uh, from from Dust Bowl called Eshta Thomko. I'm sure we don't have any people that speak Choctaw Indian out there. But uh, when I was almost done writing this record, a friend of mine said, you know, you, you left out something really big from this Dust Bowl story that you're, that you're weaving for us. 
And I said, no, I didn't, because I've been, that, at that time, like two and a half years, you know, reading everything. He said, no, don't worry about it, because they don't really even put it in the books. I said, well, how do you know about it? He goes, well, my family is connected to all this stuff. But you didn't tell anything about uh, the Native American experience from the Dust Bowl. Look up the Choctaw Indian tribe, and then you'll, you'll get it, why it's important. So I looked them up, and, uh, and I, the first thing I saw was that they're in Oklahoma, which is where the Dust Bowl, that was kind of the epicenter. But then when you first, when you immediately read about them, you go, wait a minute, they're from Louisiana, Mississippi, which is quite a ways away, and very different kind of uh, environment there, very, you know, wet and uh, humid, kind of, kind of semi-tropical. But then up in the Oklahoma, it's dry as a bone. It's like the surface of the moon a lot of times. Um, and then I realized, oh, they were one of the five tribes that were relocated in 1830, 100 years before the Dust Bowl, uh, in what we call today the Trail of Tears. They are forcibly removed millions of Native Americans all from across the entire southeast. Choctaw, Chickasaw Creek, the Seminoles out of Florida. Of Florida. Choctaw were the first of the five tribes that were marched in the winter by the U.S. Army. Millions of people, uh, Native Americans, died during this time because they just had to walk for a thousand miles in the winter, you know, up to a barren landscape. It's not a, not a happy moment in American history. It's not a proud moment. Uh, but I realized, yes, I do. Because look, look, these people, they survived that, and they got through it, and they lived through it, and, and they're still there. And then 100 years later, they faced the Dust Bowl, just like everybody else did, except it probably was worse for them because they had fewer resources than even the dirt poor white people had. So this, uh, I contacted the Choctaw people because I had no idea how to write this song. And I found a very nice lady, I don't mean to, I'm sorry for talking so long, but she helped me understand no, the okay. culture and uh, so I could write this song and gave me these words. Ashtathamko means have strength in their language. So it's dedicated to them and all the other Native American people who've not always been treated so great here in our country. <laughs> Earth below my blanket Sky above my head Just outside my vision The night was turning red Water is our lifeline Rain is like our blood Why is our whole world dying? Lord, what have we done? But it's all right. We're still breathing. As the thong go, we're not leaving. has come against us clouds of homo listen to the wind song singing from his soul fire has cooked our habits and lit our sky for years we will not be beaten Walk the trail of tears, but it's all right. We're still breathing. As the thaw go, we're not leaving. But it's all right. We're still breathing. The song called. We are not leaving. Thank you, Choctaw people, for helping me write that song. <laughs> Thank you.
I don't know whether to applaud. I mean, it's such a great performance. It's such a moving, you know? I don't want to be like, ah, it, that was really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a, it's a tough topic, you know? It's difficult. Yeah. Tell me about it, man. It's, um, I want to just, um, yeah, a lot of people were asking uh, about your music writing and do you give virtual classes for writing music? Do I what? Do I offer classes? Yeah, for writing music online. You know, I'm about to do one, I think, starting in June. And I, I can put more, I'm going to put more information on, about that on my website once I have it, but I'm d doing it with a, a, an education, music education place. So they've asked me to do that starting next month sometime. So I will be. So yeah. I'm like, like a master class. Not that I'm a master, but you know. Maybe. Well, I think you are. Relatively speaking. <laughs> You're a master relative to all of us. So. Let's get Grant's website up on the on board here. Everyone to grant malloy smithcom Cash cash it on the trailer if you can. There it is. There it is again. There it is again. Um, also check him out on Spotify and all the streaming platforms. Subscribe because he's putting out a lot of great singles, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment. But first, Grant, I want to let you know. Um, you know, we like to hand out things, hand out prizes to our guests. And is, there's a lot of tiers, right, of like, you know, we, of what people earn. And so we, we asked the audience what we should present you because we were so moved by your last performance. So this is actually one of the highest honors that we, we give, give out on this show. We don't give out this to very many people. I think only like a handful of times. And it's been, um, you know, it's just I was even watching the debate, there was a debate happening in the comment field here. So okay. from everyone at the Quarantine Concert Series and all the audience, we'd like to present to you the horse trophy, please. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, at least it's the there front it is, man. of the horse, not the back end. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the one I normally get the back end. <laughs> I See, the horse... That. Or, that's perfect for me. See, Cowboy, the horse. See everyone saying, I mean, everyone, there's a lot of clamoring for the horse. <laughs> there. That's funny. Thank you for that. Oh, we should give you that. You can put that, uh, you know, on your bio and everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll take them uh, on, a, on a little trail ride tomorrow. <laughs> exactly exactly well i do want to ask you about uh, some of your um recent some of your recent um singles yeah. uh, what i love about the music you're putting out it's re really music with a purpose and you're taking on sort of or uh, sort of topics so one of them that i was intrigued with is you know you're talking about aging in america yeah. and you wrote a song about aging in america it's also kind of like a well something we, we don't really talk about talk about right. the song why you wanted to do it yeah well about three years ago, maybe, I was in Texas. I won't make it as long as that last story, I promise. But I was in a food court, and I was traveling, doing shows, and there was a, a table of really old people, like 90-plus, sitting next to me, having dinner, and they were talking really loud because, you know, they're 90-plus. And, um, and I couldn't, I was trying not to eavesdrop, but I couldn't help but hear them, and, and one of the ladies said something like, they were talking about aging and what it was like, and, one, and she said that she felt invisible, when she walks down the street that she thinks that it seems like the younger people look right through her like she's not there. And that really, as a songwriter, that little nugget was in my brain right up to the moment when three years later, Mike Greenlee from New York, he was a lyricist, he called me and asked me if, if, we, if, we, if I wanted to write a song with him because we'd never collaborated before. And I said, sure, what do you want to write about? And he, and he gave me a couple ideas, and I said, nah, not that. I don't want to do anything political. And then he, then he said, what about getting older, what it's like to get older? And that memory from that food court and that old lady popped right back to my head, and I said, okay, that's the one. We, I'd love to write a song about what it's like to be, you know, like, I don't mean just, I mean, I'm old too, but not, I'm not 90. <laughs> And uh, what it's like, you know, what do you go through when your body starts to break down and maybe your mind isn't quite so sharp as it used to be. You can't remember things so much. Uh, my, my wife's mother is 92, and, you know, I, you can see it. My parents also, you know, were obviously got older. <laughs> and, uh, but I wanted the hook to be, I see you. I see you. Not I see you like the intensive care unit, but I see you. I'm not looking right through you. I am 
looking at you as a person, you were young once, just like, you know, younger than me, you, you're all ages like everybody is from zero to whatever, whatever you end up reaching. And you did great things and you went through all the same things everybody else goes through. Maybe, maybe more if you went through World War II like some of those people at that table did. So we set, we, uh, we, he's in New York City and I'm, you know, like almost 200 miles away. So we did it remotely by phone calls and some emails and stuff. But, but I produced that song here, right here in this studio and I'm very proud of it. The video, I am too. video on Sunday just won the, the, at the IMC Awards, the, the best uh, Americana video. Award. let's uh let's let's put up the big big win i think there's a big win graphic we have let's put it up for put it up for uh for grant congratulating him on that recent win um by the way if you can speak a little louder into the microphone we obviously we don't have one of the um, things about this um show we don't have any dials to press on our side so it's obviously all on there it is congratulations <laughs> on the big win <laughs> that that would go nicely with a with an applause, but my applause track is currently taking an advertising break on YouTube. <laughs> so, so we'll have to wait for the applause track. Um, five seconds here. No, but really congratulations. Uh, um, what would you like to play next? I'll play a song called Man of Steel. Um, it's not about Superman. It's about uh, the people that go and serve. We just had Memorial Day. That's, that's not for veterans. That's a different holiday, but it still involves people that served. And, uh, I met a young man in an airport. I won't make it a long story, but I, I, I met a young guy, and he inspired the song. And uh, I'd had a long talk with him. He had a, a prosthetic leg. He lost his leg in the Middle East. And I was just so amazed by his spirit, his positive spirit. He's a guy like you, Kabir. He's, he's just full of life, and he's full of ideas, and full of optimism and looking forward. And, and he wasn't upset about his leg. You know, It didn't bother him. He said, I'm going to be the first person in my family's history ever to go to college now. And he was look. That's where he was going to look at a college. I got home about a week later, and I just wrote this song. It just came out of me in like ten minutes, and that doesn't usually happen, but it did in this case. And it's been selected by the National Veterans Foundation as their official theme song. So if you go to uh, NVF or National Veterans Foundation dot org, just NVF dot org, you can you can see the video. You can contribute to them. They're a charitable organization, and they do. They're staffed only by veterans. You know and mostly volunteers and 99 point whatever percent of the money goes right to what it's supposed to go to, not buying people Rolls Royces or anything like that. So I'm very proud of them and I'm proud of, proud of the song. I was born right here like everyone learn to read and write learn to walk and run riding in my daddy's truck in summer it felt like flying i was a scrawny kid not too great at school i enlisted then the next thing I knew I'm saying my goodbyes and trading numbers and mama's crying in my soldier clothes in the blazing sun riding dusty roads with my soldier gone then the earth rose up and it spit me there was fire and blood, I can feel it now. I'm a man of steel, made of pins and wire, but these scars will heal. I still got my fire. I'm a man of steel, ever since that day, but my heart's still real. You can't take that away. It's been three long months The nurses say They're gonna ship me home But I sure want to stay 
Cause every friend I have is going nowhere And they're still trying In my soldier clothes In the blazing sun Riding dusty roads With my soldier gun Then the earth rose up And it spit me out there was fire and blood I can feel it now I'm a man of steel Made of pins and wire But these scars will heal I still got my I'm a man of steel ever since that day, but my heart's still real. I'm a man of steel, and my heart's still real. Can't take that away. Man, that is so good. Thank you. Thank you, veterans, for serving. You're a you're a vet. You're a, are you still in the service? You, I mean, thank you. I am. I am indeed. Indeed, I'm. Uh, I'm in my bunker right here. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thank you that for. I mean, it, that means a lot actually. Hearing that, and um, I can speak to all the all the um, people in my community that I'm sure that'll connect with. I got to send that out to some friends in my unit. Uh, after Please this do. show. Please do. Yeah. Um, I do want to try to fit in your last song, but, okay. but first I want to um, just say we do have a word of the day winner. So this is now that I think it's a 10 time defending champion. Ban Banerjee is just crushing it. So Ban Banerjee, you are a word of the day <laughs> winner yet again. There you go. Grant and I are applauding you. <laughs> applaud, man. Applaud. Congratulations, Ban. <laughs> I also want to uh, see. See, this is nice when the, the maestro applauds you, Van. It's nice to roll, roll reversal right there. Um, <laughs> I do want to thank the uh, great folks, um, Sandra and Camilo, for uh, helping to produce the show and doing all the um, sound checks and audio quality controls. Go to if you're an artist and needs any um, audio services, check out their website. Let's get their website up on the screen. It's uh, soundworksrecording.com. They're in Queens. And they are the King and Queens, Sandra and Camila, King and Queens. Um, and if you mention one of the two dogs, Oreo or Maui, you will get a discount. You can also schedule time just to visit with the dogs, too. Um, all right. That, I think I thanked everyone. Um, and I obviously want to thank Grant uh, before he plays his last song. Um, if you love Grant's music or if you just love his hat and love his presence, <laughs> um, please, please, please go to his website. And, you know, Daisy, Daisy, who's usually a Word of the Day winner, she says, I was so into his story that I wasn't even ready for the word of the day prompt. So it's my fault. The great my distraction fault. that you are, my friend. Uh, you're <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, what, what would you like to end with? I want to play a song called Waiting for the Good Old Days Again that I wrote just about maybe maybe three weeks ago at this point. It's about what we're all going through right now, the isolation, the loneliness, and that kind of thing. I made a video. So if you go to my website, you can see the video. I, I made the whole thing completely alone just to, to underscore the, the theme of the song. Up and down, but not this far I can't find my good luck star It's a dreary road that we've been on don't miss nothing till it's gone Better days that might have been Drinking late and sleeping in TV's on for ten hours straight I wasn't meant to hide and wait 
days get so lonely, my friend. When will I see you again? I am isolated and bleeding through my skin. I'm just waiting for the good old days again. Yes, I'm waiting for the good old days again. I worked hard since I was young. I mostly made up my own love. They say time is on our side. Tell that to the ones who've died. There will come another day. Useless talk will blow away. Babies born in sunny skies. Love and longing in our eyes. Days get so lonely, my friend. When will I see you again? I am isolated and bleeding through my skin. I'm just waiting for the good old days again. Yes, I'm waiting for the good old days again. And those good old days will come back. They will come back. I'm allergic, watch out. <laughs> He's on the boat. <laughs> this is a fun show. I get the house plan too. You gotta get the house plan, man. <laughs> Is that plastic or live? <laughs> oh, good. I'm thirsty. I'm all out of water. <laughs> I don't know what I'm giving you, but some of my dad's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. <laughs> yeah. You get in trouble. All right. Well, you got the, you got, um, the whole... You got the whole dining room here. A um, lot of love up on the screen. Uh, thank you, my friend. Everyone go to Grant Malloy's website, grant-malloy-smith.com. And then uh, check them out on Spotify, all the streaming services. Subscribe. You know what to do. Thanks for being on the show, my friend. Hope to see you in person soon. Thank you so much for having me. You're, you're a dear friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me tell you about tomorrow night. Uh, we will be having some fun tomorrow. I'm very excited uh, to have Pablo Gil and Tony Sukar on the broadcast. It's going to be exciting. We have a new album we put out, and uh, it's a Latin jazz project, big band project. We're excited to share it with you. So uh, tune in tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern, show number 95. Going to wind this baby down. Everyone have a good night and stay home if you can. Good night, everyone.